Hello guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you're doing well and enjoying this um, uh, weekend. Uh, here in Vilnius we have uh, great weather. It's nice sunny afternoon. And let's talk today about Oracle development tools. Right, uh, so before recording this video I was uh, thinking should I record it or not? Because, uh, because it kind of uh, sounds a bit negative, uh, right? And I don't want to be negative about Oracle because Oracle uh, uh, gave me lots of uh, boost in my uh, IT career. Uh, I was able to um, uh, travel lots of countries, meet a lot of uh, people, make lots of friends, and I have great memories uh, while working with Oracle products. And uh, guys from uh, from my team, they still um, do implementation with Oracle development tools. So. Uh, uh, myself, I actually moved out from Oracle, but uh, our team is still uh, working with Oracle. So I don't want to be, don't want to sound negative while um, recording this interview. It could could sound sometimes that uh, I talk uh, with sarcasm about Oracle, but yeah, uh, it's it's not my intention, right? So I just want to give you my fair opinion about uh, the state of Oracle development tools and uh, what I think. Uh, we could expect in the future from Oracle uh, for the developers. So let's uh, let's start and let's um, uh, switch to my screen. And I thought it would make sense to go to Oracle uh, Developer Tools uh, website, main website, where they uh, provide a list of tools that they actually offer to developers. All right. So there, there is plenty of different tools. Uh, in different categories like Java, SOA, web development, database development, business intelligence development. So let's pick up a uh, random any product. Let's say Oracle Warehouse Builder, just uh, random. Let's go here and we see that yeah, the last release was 11G, so that was very long ago. So probably this uh, Product is not uh, is not up to date, and if you would go to, for example, Oracle SOA uh, Service Oriented Architecture product. So what we here we see here the latest release was twelve two point one four. There is no uh, mention when this release was um, uh, publicly available, but I guess it was around two thousand nineteen uh, or two thousand twenty, right? So around two years um, there was no new release for. Uh, as way, and if you would go to Web Center Suite, for example, uh, Web Center is uh, like a product which offers um, a set of different technologies to run your website or portal online. So it's the same thing. It's twelve to point one point four, and this means uh, lately there were no new development, no new release for Web Center. And why I'm, the idea why I'm showing this to you is just to, to tell you that if you would go to most likely any Oracle development tools, except the ones that are related to a database, uh, you would see that uh, release, the, there are no, there is no like um, any traction or, or action lately. And uh, this can be explained because Oracle invests investing heavily into the cloud development and all the focus goes there, uh, building Oracle cloud products. Uh, while it uh, makes sense and uh, it is great for someone, but uh, for the people who were using Oracle development tools, that's bad news because uh, Oracle is not uh, focusing as much uh, anymore as it seems like uh, for Oracle products, uh, for Oracle developers. With some exceptions like uh, uh, Apex, for example, there are lately uh, new versions of Oracle Apex that it seems uh, have strong community support and uh, it runs well and uh, there are no issues like that with Oracle Apex. And what concerns myself, uh, I'm coming, I was working a lot with Oracle G Developer and ADF and uh, Oracle G Developer was the main and still uh, probably is the one of the main tools in Oracle to build. Um, uh, Fusion applications with Java, right? So uh, it runs uh, ADF. Um, you, you build ADF applications with Oracle G Developer and you deploy it on WebLogic and you run uh, those applications there. Uh, and if you look into the uh, 
a list of the releases for OG developer. We see the last one was 12 to 1.4, and it's exactly the same like with Web Center, Web Center or SOA. So all the products were released uh, around two years ago. And yeah, this kind of sad uh, in one way, but another way, uh, in my honest opinion, uh, I think if you would, would like to build um, enterprise application with Java, there are no better choice than to go with ADF or uh, and JDeveloper to build the application, enterprise application. If you're not looking to build some um, uh, fancy UIs and so on, but uh, actually if, even with ADF, you can build fancy UIs because you, ADF, uh, it renders uh, HTML and you can plug in JavaScript libraries there and, uh, and bring up uh, rich uh, functionality into ADF application. Uh, yes, with ADF, uh, you would hit a uh, higher um, uh, load on the server because every user session uh, would need to have memory and resources allocated on the server side. But on other, on other hand, ADF was never designed to build uh, public websites with uh, hundred thousands of users. ADF is, was built and designed to create uh, enterprise uh, portals and enterprise applications with limited set of users, but uh, with complex functionality. So this is where ADF stands for. Okay, and yes, yeah, we don't see new uh, things coming in developer and ADF, uh, but um, yeah, hopefully things sometime would change and maybe uh, they'll the, the, the focus would come back from cloud to um, uh, those Java developer tools and TDF, but yeah, we, no, we don't know this. So at the moment, at the moment things are like, like they are. Uh, I think from Oracle, there are no best tool to build enterprise applications uh, than with EDF and uh, GDeveloper. Let's see what else. This application express, and this is very popular lately, and uh, it got strong community. And uh, with Apex, what you get is uh, you have database, and from the database, essentially, you can render UI. And uh, the data, uh, if you, you would compare it with EDF, in EDF, you have uh, uh, business logic layer. It runs in EDF itself, itself on the logic. It's fetching data from the database uh, and then it's doing data processing in web logic, uh, preparing data and rendering the UI. With Apex, uh, all the data sits in database, right? And uh, you render UI from the database and this UI is being displayed in the browser. So you don't have middle layer like you would have with EDF. Uh, I would not say it's bad or, no, or not. It depends on, on, on your use cases and on, on your preferences. Myself, I would prefer to have middle layer because I don't want to entirely depend on database and I want to put some logic to be available in the middle layer and uh, not to rely completely on database, but it's up to you. Uh, there are different opinions about that. On the other hand, uh, what I don't like about Apex is that uh, it, it's actually it doesn't have this um, uh, like it, it doesn't run on the client, right? It relies on database. So it's the same story like with ADF. You would use Apex to build um, uh, uh, probably internal applications or portals. You could build uh, public uh, websites with Apex as well, but then you would have this um, uh, uh, side effect that every time user clicks anywhere in the application, it will uh, go to the server and uh, request the server to, to, to bring back the response. And this will create a lag. And uh, nowadays users, they would prefer to run everything on the client side and you don't want to interact with the server side each time. So probably uh, if I would use Apex, I would use it to build some internal applications, but I definitely I would not use Apex to build uh, external websites. And look, for example, if I go to uh, developer tools in my browser to network, right? And this is a demo application from uh, the Trans Oracle Apex. I found it online on Google and it comes from apexoracle.com uh, host, which means it's uh, official Apex uh, demo application. Right? Let me refresh it. And if I would click uh, anywhere, like um, basic cards, for example, right? Uh, you, you get some UI, fine, you got uh, here in the network um, log, we got um, response back. And then if I click home, 
you see this uh, some luck and everything is refreshing the whole page is refreshing so it's not some just a partial response it's a whole page is being uh, loaded and you see here in uh, response uh, we get we get back uh, lots of stuff again so it's not being cached and then if i click on basic cards once again then it's uh, you see a load happens one more time and then we get back uh, the content so uh, my point is that apex is great probably and uh, it uh, offers you local development lots of stuff and it's convenient for database guys but uh, you would not build it uh, you would not use apex to build uh, uh, professional public application which looks nice and, and works fast right it's fine for to use it for internal stuff and again uh, different pe people may have different opinion about that and this is my personal opinion which, uh, which i'm talking about okay so what uh, i talked about uh, gdeveloper adf apex what about uh, some more trendy uh, tools for developers available from oracle so the the one which um, it sounds more mm, the most promising at this moment is Oracle Visual Builder, where Oracle puts a lot of focus, uh, does a lot of investment, and they promote it as the main um, uh, main a main tool for uh, declarative development. It's kind of strange uh, in in one way because we have Apex, which is also uh, promoted for local development, and then we have Oracle Visual Builder, which is promoted for local developer as well. But uh, this is uh, what often happens in Oracle. You have different uh, products that seem uh, kind of competing with each other. But um, yeah, on the other hand, uh, they target different uh, different people because Apex, I believe, is more uh, more close to database da database guys, and Visual Builder is more for JavaScript developers that uh, want to offload some of the uh, manual coding to the tool, which would help them to, to automate some sort of some parts of the development. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I had a chance to work with Visual Builder and it's a decent product. I think uh, you could use it to build enterprise applications. But um, again, it's uh, it's a cloud product. So you need to pay uh once you develop your application you need to pay for that and but then at the end you have option to export your application and run on your own environment so when application is ready you can export it and then you don't need to pay for runtime instance of course when you export it you would not be able to use rely on security from oracle cloud and some other other things um, but uh, technically you are not completely locked in so you see, I'm not entirely negative about Oracle development tools because I kind of like Oracle Visual Builder and hopefully there'll be more customers uh, who would look, uh, who would jump into Oracle Visual Builder in the future. Okay, and Oracle Jet, and this is not actually a tool, it's a toolkit because uh, it's a library, right, which you could use to build a user interface. And at the end, uh, what uh, what about front end developer right what 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 job is done by front end developer usually it's uh, like i i saw on twitter the other day uh, who is front end developer this is the guy who is using some api uh, to fetch data and display this data right, right so to display data you would use uh, you don't need to use some tool you could use library like oracle jet right and this is the homepage of Oracle Jet. Uh, we see that the last release was on January 18, and this seems to be, uh, we don't, usually they, they were releasing every two months, but uh, at, at this moment, there is some delay. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe just this decided to skip intermediate release and just go to the main release. And hopefully uh, we will see new version of Jet. Right? It will, it, it, this is a bit worrying, but probably the guy is just busy on implementing more features. Let's. Let's wait for one month or so, and uh, let's hope the new version comes up. Okay, and yeah, with Oracle Jet, by the way, when you build uh, logic inside Visual Builder, you're also using Oracle Jet there, and uh, Visual Builder helps you to automatically generate UI with Oracle Jet, or you have option also there to do manual coding. And on the other hand, you can pick up the Oracle Jet library and do all the coding by yourself uh, on your own environment. Oracle Jet provides a um, cookbook with an uh, extensive list of uh, components to build um, 
uh, the, the data entry applications to build dashboards and so on. So the, the list of components is, is big. And uh, for, in my experience, uh, Oracle Jet components, they are very competitive and you could um, compare them and, and tell actually that uh, they, they are not worse than uh, material UI, for example. Uh, yeah, you, to be fair, Oracle Jet team development did a, did a great job and the list of components is, is, is good. And it's just up to you to, to go and use uh, these components, right? And yeah, let's see. <clears throat> Before Oracle Jet, you get access to documentation, and if you, uh, yeah, this list of success stories. So there are external companies who are using Oracle Jet uh, already, and. Um, it's been quite quite popular, but on the other hand, uh, I think it didn't got uh, externally from Oracle very high um, usage and adoption for some reason. Uh, I don't know, but it looks like internally Oracle is using uh, Jet quite extensively and many products are using Jet, but externally um, it didn't pick up yet. And it was at least quite for quite a while in 2015, but um, uh, yeah, hopefully uh hopefully community would grow but um at, at this moment it doesn't it kind of seems like community is, is is stable it's not growing it's not going down yeah so to summarize uh, what i think about oracle development tools at this moment it looks like um uh if you're not using cloud then uh you should not expect too much new features and new development with oracle developer tools because they stay as they are uh, you would expect patches and bug fixes probably through oracle support and uh, you should think if you would like to stick with oracle probably at this moment you should uh, invest in oracle cloud and uh, at least part of your uh, system you should try to bring to Oracle Cloud like Visual Builder and uh, see how it works. And uh, I know I know a couple of uh, happy customers, actually, uh, I'm, I'm honest, and I, I was asking them how you like Oracle Visual Builder, and they said, said they love them, they love Visual Builder. So uh, it, it's a good product probably. And you should you should try it out. And yeah, on the other hand, I'm not you know I'm not working with with Oracle, and it's not that I want to sell it to you. I'm just saying what what I heard from people. So yeah, hopefully this Oracle Developer Tools overview uh, was useful uh, for you. And my main idea was to give you my uh, feeling what I what. Uh, I think about Oracle Developer Tools at, at this at this stage of time, and uh, hopefully it will be useful uh, if you would think about future direction, where to go, and what to use. And if you have more questions, don't hesitate and uh, ping me anytime, and I'll be happy to answer. So thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye.